In this video, I will show an overview of several different types of sock toes. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm happy to have you here. I go live on YouTube at least once a month, so please join me for a live stream one of these days. There are lots of different ways that you can work a sock toe. Even if you are doing cuff down or toe up, there are lots of different options. So let's take a look at some of these sock toes. The wedge toe is a very common toe um, structure. And if you are a sock knitter, you are probably very familiar with this toe. This toe can be worked cuff down or toe up. If worked cuff down, the tip of the toe is grafted closed with Kitchener stitch. If worked toe up, you have to use a provisional cast on that casts on live stitches on either side of a ridge. So Judy's Magic Cast On is a very common cast on method for toe up toes such as this. The toe has stitches uninterrupted, un undisturbed on either side of the toe, creating that wedge. And there is a line of increases or decreases on either side in four locations, creating that wedge. This can be modified to create a narrower wedge or a uh, less deep toe box. So here is a narrower version. Fewer stitches are undisturbed on either side of the toe, but this, the anatomy is the same. You can also modify it to be deeper um, or wider, and so more stitches are left undisturbed on either side, and those decrease lines are pulled closer to the center of the toe. You can further modify these toes to make them longer if needed by adding um, plain rounds in between the decrease rounds. So typically they are worked with a decrease round, if worked cuff down, every other round. So every other round is a plain round. If you add decrease rounds, so you work two plain rounds between each decrease round, then you can um, lengthen this toe. You could also round it a little bit more by changing the number of plain rounds in between your decrease rounds. So you can begin with two plain rounds for a certain number of decrease sets and then move to one plain round and then move to no plain rounds at the end. And this will round this curve a little bit. Um, it will change the length of the toe, so make sure, sure you are doing your row gauge calculations to figure out how long the toe will be. If you prefer not to Kitchener closed your toe, you can work a round toe. So this toe is round. It looks very much like the top of a hat. This toe places eight decreases evenly spaced around the circumference um, when working cuff down. And then um, a different number of plain rounds are worked in between each decrease round to provide the length. So you begin with about four plain rounds in between, and then three, and then two, and then one. And then you are left with something like eight stitches at the end that you just run your tail through and cinch closed. So there's no Kitchener closing of the toe. You can work this toe up by casting on in the round a small number, like eight stitches, and then reversing those directions by working an increase round more frequently at the beginning and then slowing the rate down by adding plain rounds towards the end until you get to the total number of stitches that you desire. A pointed toe is another toe that requires no Kitchener 
to close at the end when worked cuffed down, and it places four decreases evenly spaced around and um, at a static location, so they spiral, and it intersperses the decreases with a plain round for the majority of the toe, and then towards the end they are worked every round. The decreases are worked every round until you get to um, eight or four stitches, and then the tail is used to close the top, um, the tip of the toe. This is more difficult to convert to toe up because the increases are needing to be made, would be needed um, to be placed in every single round and not a lot of increases allow you to place them in every single round. Um, there are some, so this, it could be done, um, but yeah, you would need to cast on a small number of stitches, four or eight, and then work those increases every round and then every other round. A toe similar to the pointed toe is a six gore toe. So similar to the pointed toe, it's worked cuff down and decreases are placed evenly around six decreases per round. So it again, it spirals, but it's a bit more of a, of a wider spiral um, and less pointy than the pointed toe, a little more wide. These decreases are placed every other round all the way to the end, so that helps to um, minimize the, that pointiness as well. Um, so, and then again, you do not need to use Kitchener to close it. You simply run your tail through the remaining six stitches at the end to close. A toe similar to the wedge toe is the double decrease toe. So still four decreases worked per round and they are placed at the sides, but instead of there being a wedge, you are working a line of double decreases, one on each side of the toe. So this toe is shallower than a wedge toe. There's no um, added thickness to that toe box, and it is quite pointy. But that's another option. Uh, it would be difficult to convert this to a toe up. This would be really only cuff down. Another toe similar to a wedge toe is the French toe. So this toe has three wedges. So if I hold it looking at the toe edge, there you can see the three wedges. So it is worked very similar to a wedge toe, but there are six decreases in every round and they are placed um, evenly, you know, in, in groups um, of two, evenly spaced around, but with a set of uninterrupted stitches in between each wedge grouping. And then no need to Kitchener closed the toe. You simply run your tail through the remaining stitches. So it gives you a shape a little similar to a wedge toe, um, a little more um, less angular, a little more rounded, and and perhaps a little easier to work. Another toe that can be worked both cuff down and toe up is a short row toe. This sample is worked as though it was a cuff down toe. So the instep is worked and then half of the instep stitches are placed on hold while the other half, the bottom of the toe, are worked as a short row wedge, just like for a heel. 
and then the increasing wedge is worked to the end and the top of the toe stitches are then grafted to the instep stitches that were on hold. So if I fold it this way, you can see that's a heel, very much like a heel, but in this instance, it is a toe. So this can be worked toe up as well if you cast on half of your sock stitches and then work the toe, um, the decreasing wedge, and then the increasing wedge, and then your stitches live here at the top of the toe, and, the and then the provisional stitches that you unwork the provisional cast on at the bottom of the toe, then become your stitches for the foot. There are a few types of toes where you cast on and work flat. So this is one example of those. This is called the easy toe. So a small number of stitches are worked, about a third of your total stitches or so, maybe a quarter to a third, and you work flat to make a little rectangle, and you work um, like eight rows flat, something like that, and then you pivot the work and you pick up stitches along that small rectangle along the selvage, and then work across the other side of the rectangle, and then pick up stitches on the other side of the rectangle. And then you work a set of increases, just like for a toe-up wedge toe, where the increases are placed on either side of a center column of stitches. So this um, only works for a toe-up sock. And like a wedge toe, you could widen this area here to make the toe box a little wider. Now, one drawback to this is there is a small ridge here on either side where that salvage stitch, um, that seam from those picked up stitches, is bumpy. Another version of that kind of toe is called a pontoon toe. So again, a small number of stitches are cast on provisionally, and then you work a rectangle. In this case, you're working a slightly deeper rectangle than the easy toe. And then again, you work around and you pick up stitches along the side of the rectangle, work across the provisional stitches, and then we'll pick up stitches along the other side of that small rectangle and then begin working in the round. This toe places those uninterrupted stitches on the very top of the toe and the bottom of the toe instead of at the sides like for a wedge toe. So the increases are placed at a consistent location here in a vertical line on the top and the bottom. So it makes this um, smooth toe. Again, this is only a toe up toe. This toe, if you turn it 90 degrees and flatten it, um, is called a moccasin toe. So that um, is another option. It's very attractive. Um, it creates this uninterrupted line going over the tips of the toes and a curved wedge coming up um, over the instep and the bottom of the foot. Again, drawback with this method is those salvage stitches there inside the line where those stitches were picked up can um, cause a ridge on the inside. Another easy toe for toe up toes is a garter toe. So a large number of stitches, one quarter of your total desired stitches are cast on and then um, cast on provisionally and then you work in garter for uh, as long as um, until you have the number of ridges equal to one quarter of your desired stitch count. 
and then you work around this rectangle and pick up stitches, one in every garter bump ridge along the side, and work around and then pick up stitches, one in every garter ridge bump around, so that you have your total desired number of stitches without needing to work any decreases at all or increases. And so it makes this more squared off. So then when it's worn, it looks like this diamond. The garter forms this kind of diamond over the tips of the toes. And it's a much more squared off toe, but quite easy to work. And there are is less ridges in this instance because with the garter, you can just pick up the the edge stitches, so that reduces the ridge on the inside of the sock. So it would be a more comfortable sock toe than one of the other options that have a salvage stitch seam on the inside there. Two other toes I'd like to show you are the bot toe and the tot toe. So B-O-T and T-O-T. These are a little unusual because, um, so this is the B-O-T toe, which stands for bottom of toe, um, toe. So this begins, and this one could be worked cuff down or toe up. Um, it begins at the bottom um, upper edge of the instep, um, at the very um, bottom of the toe. And so you begin, so here's where you begin actually, right here. You begin on half of your total number of stitches and you work a wedge. You're working flat a basically a wedge toe, but only over half of your stitches and working it flat. Every edge stitch, the first stitch of every row is slipped so that you get a chain salvage along each ends of this wedge. And then when you reach the tip of the toe, you begin, um, you stop slipping the first stitch of each row and you work flat and you knit a stitch out of the chain stitch. So you're gradually increasing your stitch count here. You've decreased your stitch count to just these tip of the toe stitches. Then you begin working short rows, picking a stitch up in every chain stitch on either side, um, gradually increasing your stitch count until you are back to your um, the other side of your instep. And so if you did this cuff down, um, you would need to graft those stitches at the end to the instep stitches. Um, this I could see um, working a toe up sock. This would be more convenient. Um, you would provisionally cast on your half of your stitches, leave those on hold, and work the toe and then pick those provisional stitches up to begin then working the rest of the sock in the round. So it kind of is a hybrid toe because the one side looks like a wedge toe and the other side looks like a short row toe. The related sock toe called the tot toe, T-O-T, stands for tips of toes, um, is looks the same, but it begins at the tip of the toes. So you cast on provisionally a smaller number of stitches and you work increases on either side um, while slipping the first stitch of every row to create that chain stitch salvage along the sides here. So working flat, you will work up here and there's chain stitch salvage. Then you put those stitches on hold, you join new yarn, and you come back to the beginning um, at the tip of the toes 
and you again you work back and forth short, short rows picking up a stitch at each chained selvage edge until you are at your the top of your toe and then you pick those stitches that were on hold back up and resume all the way around so this would be best for a toe up sock it wouldn't really work for a cuff down sock but again, it looks like a short row toe on the one side and a toe up wedge toe on the other side. My last three examples are some old fashioned sock toes. So these are seen in Weldon's book of sock knitting. And um, the one of them is the star of five points. And so the star of five points and the star of four points are both found in Weldon's and they require 80 stitches around and they are um, cuffed down toes. The star of five points creates a five pointed star at the tip of the toe. and uses purl stitches and purl decreases along these decrease lines, and then transitions to decreasing every other, um, every round um, at towards the end to get a faster decrease rate there at the tip of the star. And then the, there is no Kitchener needed, all of the, stitches that are remaining, the tail gets pulled through those last stitches. So it's a very attractive toe, but again requires 80 stitches at the start in order to work. It might be able to be modified um, as long as there are um, a, as a multiple of five stitches, I think. Um, I'll have to play around with it to see, but um, yeah, so that's the star of five points. So related to it also in Weldon's is the star of four points. And so it creates the same thing, but it's a four pointed star. Same idea, it uses purl stitches to delineate and then purl decreases to delineate this decrease line and then every round towards the end has a decrease to pull those stitches in more quickly at the end. Again, no Kitchener needed. The tail is run through the last few stitches at the end. There's a version by Nancy Bush that is a modification of these and it's the star of three points and so it needs 60 stitches and it creates a three pointed star at the tip of the toe step. So same idea um, with similar look but three points to the star instead of four or five. So that was an overview of several different types of sock toes. I didn't go too much in depth into these toes, but look for some individual videos soon. I hope this video was helpful and informative and happy sock knitting.